Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us for today's much anticipated training session. My name is Saurabh and I take care of communications and industry volunteering initiatives at NASCOM Foundation. Uh, let me start with a little bit of housekeeping. Good morning, uh, everyone. Thank you for joining us for today's much anticipated training session. My name is Saurabh and I take care of communication. Saurabh, you are on mute. Hello? Okay, so after uh, some bit of technical glitches, we are back. Um, hi, my name is Saurabh. I take care of communications and industry volunteering initiatives at NASCOM Foundation. Let me start with a bit of housekeeping. All lines are muted. So if you have any technical issues throughout the session, uh, okay, please. So after uh, some bit of technical glitches, we are back. Um, hi, my name is Saurabh. I take care of communications and industry volunteering initiatives at NASCOM Foundation. Let yeah. me start with a bit of housekeeping. Online are muted. So, if you have any technical issues, yeah. Um, I think it was, I was getting a feedback from our YouTube line. So, just close that. Uh, so, yeah, um, in case you have, have any questions, so uh, you can also put it up uh, on the QA chat box. Uh, we are uh, also starting a pre webinar uh, poll right now, as we see. Um, so, if you can just uh, uh, go ahead and uh, put in your inputs into the poll as well. It will be of great help to us in making this webinar viable and uh, much more effective for you. If you are on a Wi-Fi connection, uh, uh, we have uh, multiple programs and have multiple programs open. Uh, this can sometimes affect the quality of the audio and the video of the webinar. And if possible, please, and therefore if possible, please clo close all the other programs to help you have the best experience. Please note that this webinar has been recorded and streamed live, and the link of the recording will be available at the NASCOM Foundation YouTube page too. Uh, so a bit about NASCOM Foundation, if I am allowed to do that, uh, I'll just share my screen now so that it becomes easier for you to understand what NASCOM Foundation really is all about. Um, just one minute. So NASCOM Foundation actually has two major pillars. So one is the skilling pillar and the other one is tech for good pillar. And we are also uh, into volunteering and donations. So uh, in the skilling pillar, something that could interest a lot of you uh, out here is the digital literacy portion, wherein we have launched a, a program called, or a portal called DigiSaksha. Uh, you can actually uh, go about and check out digisaksha.org. Over here, you'll be able to get all your beneficiaries in case you are into digital literacy, trained on digital uh, literacy and digital skills, completely free of cost. Anyone can register and uh, you can train any number of beneficiaries. There is no cap as such. Uh, from a tech for good perspective, uh, we do a lot of uh, uh, NGO transformation, NGO digital transformation really. And uh, what we are planning, uh, what we actually end up doing is through Big Tech, which is our uh, uh, software donation program. Apart from that, we are also uh, uh, betting big on our volunteerism and donations initiative. Uh, 
very recently, we were able to help around 2.5 or uh, 2.1 million people uh, to uh, through funds raised from within the industry uh, for COVID-19 uh, uh, relief. We are currently also working with 10,000 plus NGOs and uh, are uh, wanting you also to come to our portal to make sure that you are also able to get uh, various different volunteers. Uh, again, this is all completely free of cost and donations, wherein we don't really charge anything. A bit more about uh, Big Tech. Uh, Big Tech is our software donation program. Most of you would already know about this. Uh, in Big Tech, you can have various different uh, tools and software available for you for all your needs. Uh, we actually end up uh, donating a lot of this software free of cost. And for others, we have we charge a very, very small amount. So the software is practically still available uh, at a much, much lower rate than the market prices. A big announcement also over here I'd want to make is that we'll be coming out with Wix very, very soon. Wix, as you all may know, is a code-free software uh, wherein through which you can create multiple number of uh, websites directly. It also provides for hosting. It also provides for creation of website. And I, it is one particular thing that uh, we are believing a lot of the NGOs could really use going forward. And uh, we will sure be surely be coming out uh, with a very, very, uh, uh, in a very, very uh, small duration uh, with an announcement as to what VIX platform is all about and how you can avail that donation to. Um, let me now take you through the other program that we have, the My Kartavya Initiative. That's where we actually uh, have been able to uh, conjure the volunteering goodness of the industry. And uh, we have also uh, been able to enlist around 300 odd NGOs already into the platform and more so are uh, uh, coming in as we speak. Uh, we have three separate things that we actually talk about over here. One is the acts of random kindness, which are micro events really that uh, you can actually host on this particular platform for volunteers to come in and be a part of. Then there are uh, volunteering opportunities these are larger opportunities that you can take care of uh, through volunteerism, like for example, creation of using volunteer skills to get a app created, for example, or uh, to get project management done or to like, there are various different things that you can actually look at, train more and more people on uh, digital literacy, again, could be another example. And then there is donate for impact. Over here, uh, we actually have created another portal wherein we are able to look at uh, uh, the donations that the NGOs required for various different causes, all these donations can be fulfilled through this particular platform as well. And we don't charge any fees for the NGOs, neither do we charge any kind of uh, admin or any other charges while the donation is happening. So there is no cut happening in this particular thing, apart from a basic cut that the uh, payment gateway itself does. So this is completely free of cost again for you. And uh, for that, you can actually go on to mykartavya.org to find more. <clears throat> so now very quickly, let me also introduce our star uh, uh, volunteer for My Kartavya, who's been able to agree and uh, help all of us to figure out as to how we uh, can use Adobe Photoshop for uh, our various different purposes. Um, so just let me read a bit about his profile as well. He's a lead consultant. Uh, he's a lead technical support consultant for Adobe. Mr. Sandeep Singh is a street photographer and a graphic designer enthusiast. He loves to share his knowledge and experience whenever he gets a chance. Apart from this, he likes reading books and playing and watching cricket, listening to music, and sometimes even cooking. Um, his favorite author is Paulo Coelho. And his favorite book is uh, Alchemist. He's a huge fan of Chennai Super Kings, something that we are all looking forward to this year. Again, for Chennai Super Kings to be winning. Uh, I'm also rooting for it, though. And he's a keen listener and a learner and is always uh, uh, out there uh, trying to share his skills as well. And that's what exactly he's going to do right now. So over to you, Sandeep. I'm... Uh, uh, passing on the baton to you for you to start your own video. And from there on, uh, 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 teach us as to how we can uh, work on Adobe Photoshop.
thank you zarif and uh, welcome everyone and uh, thank you for giving me this opportunity uh, nascom foundation and uh, so showing my knowledge and to help these uh, much people i can see i have uh, we have around 900 participants and this is a, a very huge thing and uh, as sort of sort of just mentioned that i am a street photographer and i work for adobe as a lead technique consultant photography and photoshop and lightroom are uh, my major forte and uh, we help users or customers all over the globe uh, you know to uh, help with photoshop and uh, lightroom queries and also help them with their projects so without wasting any time so let's start and okay so i'm going to share my screen so uh okay yeah it is start okay sorry okay so okay so this is photoshop you can see here and uh, before uh, we start from uh, you know so i just wanted to uh, tell you about uh, what is photoshop how can you Hmm. install it and uh, how can you use it before we do it so photoshop uh, it's uh, uh, you know it's been uh, it's in the market for more than 25 years and it's a, po a pioneer uh, it's on and we can create uh, flyers we can create uh, we can edit images we can uh, create uh posters over there and uh, uh you know all the basic requirement that you guys need it will be there and uh so adobe provides photoshop uh as a uh, package also and is a single app also and uh, uh, apart from the photoshop so we have uh, other other pro other softwares like illustrator in design and they can uh, they can also help you guys to uh in you know to uh to work with your creativity and create your uh, uh, flyers and create your uh, start you know initiate anything you want to do it with your work and uh, okay so with, uh, without wasting any time let's start so this is uh, photoshop window so when you launch photoshop you see this window this is called our uh, welcome screen or home screen here so let me just turn off my video for a while so that we can have a good connectivity okay great okay now so this is uh, our photoshop welcome screen or uh, we call it home screen also so here uh, you can see uh we have all my recent items whatever we have i have opened in the past and and there a left left side you can see in the left side you can see uh, there is create new and open button so uh create new is to create a new document and uh, for open open means you uh, if you want to open a new document so so let's start with create new here you can see this is a new document window has just come up so i can see some okay so this is new document window and in new document windows so uh, you can see there is a, a already defined preset that we get here uh, 
this is my save preset. So these are uh, preset for photo, print, art and illustrator, web, phone, uh, mobile, and film and video. So generally we work with photo and print presets. Uh, why? Because these are widely used all across the globe and uh, most of the people they only work on photo and uh, print so by default it shows the size in centimeters uh, you can change it to inches so it will show uh, width and height in inches same goes for the print so print uh, our default size is letter, letter size that's eight and half into eleven inches and uh, then a4 size that uh, in india we uh, use a4 size paper a lot so uh, we can uh, select this and change the uh, inches the measurement into inches and also uh, we have orientation portrait and landscape these are two orientation you can see if you click on uh, one of these so you will see the width and height are changing you can see that so i i want to work with uh, landscape so i just click on uh, landscape mode uh, orientation and then uh, this is the resolution resolution is nothing just uh, how uh, how pixels are you know showing on your uh, uh, canvas so i will leave it at 300 i will not change it because uh, 300 is a, is a very good uh, for uh, printing and even for the posting on website web so this is good color mode i will not change make it to uh, just keep it rgb do not change it do not change it uh, the bit rate of uh, your color so 8 bit is very common and widely used and this is the background color 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 profile for my, my monitor pixel aspect ratio i will not change this also so this uh, this is the area that uh, so this is the area that you would be able to uh, make changes so just only Just a moment. Yeah. So just make sure that when you create uh, any document, so these areas are there. Uh, you need to just work with the width and height of your uh, image accordingly you have to plan and guys uh, uh, one more thing so sometimes uh, we create uh, 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 like we want to create a big poster around uh, around a very big like uh, in feet uh, if, if i talk about the feet so like 20 uh, 23 feet and so 23 feet or so very big a big holding so do not uh, do uh, here just make a normal size of your uh, document because if you create a very huge poster here uh, like a very huge uh, uh, canvas size so what will happen your system will crash or maybe photoshop will crash because it will have a lot of data on your screen and then uh, it will not work so just create a small like uh, uh, maximum size you can go with legal or you know i i can go with uh, uh, 25 inches only just go with inches only uh, do not uh, play with uh, feet okay so that will you know uh, make sure that you are able to work on Photoshop without any trouble. So just make sure that. Okay. So let's click. Uh, let's hit on create button. So once I hit on the create button, you can see this uh, window has come up, and uh, this is called Canvas, and this is our uh, workspace of Photoshop. So. Here uh, you can see this is uh, in, the, uh, in the left side of uh, the panel. It is uh, toolbar, and uh, and the right side we have uh, layers. 
layers panel channel paths so we work generally under layer so we'll talk about what is layer and uh, how it works and then we have property adjustment thing and this is ruler you can see at the top this is ruler so it shows uh, inches right now because we have picked inches and right click uh, on if you if you don't see uh, the ruler my shortcuts are not working yeah sometimes you see this window there is no ruler so you don't need to panic there so just uh, go to this windows of uh, sorry view option under file view and then click on rulers or control r then you will have your ruler back so it's a vertical and horizontal uh, horizontal and vertical ruler here so you can see width and height accordingly and uh, if you want if you don't see uh, uh, if you see you know numbers like these so just right click on the ruler and click on inches so then you will have uh, your measurement in inches or centimeters or millimeters so this is how it works you can see uh i work on inches most of the time and uh, so it's uh, 11 by 11 and half by 8 8 point something uh, we have it here yes and apart from that if you want to see what is your current size of your uh, document So you can also see at the bottom here. Can you see it? Yeah, this is, it shows your current size of your document and, pic, and pixels, uh, PPI, what PPI you have. So it shows the zoom screen, zoom also. This is the uh, zoom level of your skin. Obviously, we cannot see the full size image on Photoshop. So it just show show uh, in in a particular zoom. So if I want to uh, check it on hundred percent, so it will be like this. Okay, so shortcuts are not working. It's okay, we can do it uh, the way the shortcuts are not working. So, or either you can just put uh, numbers here. Yeah, so let's see the zoom. So this is 100% zoom. So you can see it's 100%, it is bigger than my screen now. So uh, I won't be able to, you know, work on this uh, in, in this workspace. So uh, what we do, uh, we work on a zoom uh, level, which is fit to our screen. And uh, what, how can you get that? Uh, under view you can see this fit on screen option so a shortcut is control zero on your keyboard so this will fit so if you want to see your work on 100 percent so control one is 100 percent and how would you know it's 100 percent there are two ways to get to know that one is here at the uh, left bottom corner and, uh, and second is at the on the document name you can see that so it's 100% zoom right now. So let's move back to fit to screen. So this is fit to screen, uh, uh, fit to screen zoom. Okay. So this is our, uh, in this way you can zoom and uh, you can see your work. So uh, sometimes, sometimes, uh, 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 we don't see uh, you know uh, perfect picture when while we working on a particular zoom level so we can uh, go to we can increase the zoom uh, using this zoom tool here 
uh, Z is a shortcut for that, then you can just click on zoom. And if you want to zoom out, so this these two buttons as the option bar, uh, zoom in and zoom out. So this is zoom out minus with minus icon and with plus icon is zoom in. So zoom out. So this is zooming out. So Z is the key. Okay, Z on your keyboard is uh, the shortcut. And if you want to go back to your previous shortcut, that is the move tool. So this is the move tool here. So this, if you just click on that or press V on your keyboard. So in this way, you can uh, move back to your previous tool. So most of the time uh, we work on, we work on uh, move tool. And uh, so, with you cannot uh, zoom with scrolling button, but you can. Uh, there is a shortcut for that. Halt. Uh, sorry. Uh, yeah. You need to press Alt key on your keyboard and then scroll up and scroll down. Then you can zoom in, zoom out. So I can uh, see that. Uh, yeah, this is Alt, zoom, scroll up, scroll down, and scroll up. So you need to press Alt key on your keyboard. Okay, guys. So uh, this is about your uh, workspace here a little bit, and uh, we can. Uh, we have other works with 3D graphic, uh, graphic and web motion paint and uh, painting and uh, photography. So generally we work on essential. Uh, I, uh, I'd suggest do not uh, move uh, out of this because you might lose some tools or some other places. So let's work on essentials only. So uh, let me just create a new document again. So if you can see how I created it, you can see right now, create new document. I, I pick uh, under photo, default photo size, that is uh, uh, this one, six, uh, six, dot, uh, six by four almost. I just click on create again, fit to the screen, zoom level. And then uh, if I want to save it, this document right now uh, the file uh, file name is showing untitled so untitled means the file is not saved or uh, it, it is uh, still i have given I haven't, I haven't given any name to this so uh, we can open multiple files or multiple documents so yes another way to create a doc document file new or control n is a shortcut key so let's create another document. So here you can see this is untitled two. Okay, so in this way I can open multiple documents here. So again, it depends on the system, uh, how much document it can hold because it, it uh, for sure is a memory consuming app. So it takes a lot of RAM or memory on your system. So I would suggest if you're working on a document, just open one or two documents at a time and then we can take it. And then you, uh, your system would be able to manage it and would be, and you guys are able to work on that properly. Okay then, so let's uh, save it. So uh, because saving is the first thing that I, I, I generally uh, you know, tell people because if you don't know how to save your work, so this is, you can see how can you save file and file save as, it's showing save as because it's the first time you get save as, so let's save it on that here. So file name, tech demo. Okay, Photoshop should be Photoshop first because Yes, so it is now tech demo dot PSD dot PSD is a format for Photoshop file. So now we have a cloud format also that that is called PSDC. And uh, so if you might see PSDC file, that is uh, how it works. 
Okay, let's move uh, around. Uh, let's move towards layers because that's the main th main thing we have. So here here is layer. And what is layer uh, basically? So layer is a, a stack of uh, images. I would say, like you have a, a book or a, or a notebook. So you have pages in that. So those pages are in a stack. So uh, similarly, layers are in that stack. Only difference is that those pages are not transparent, but layers uh, have some transparent and some text there and some. transparent layers, text layer and some color layers also. So we are going to talk about them and how can you create layers and how can you create, uh, how can you work on that? So here we have, so let me open a file which is on layer basic. Hey, uh, you can see now uh, this is a layer demo. So I have three layers, one, two, three. So I can uh, click any layer and uh, then move that layer on your screen. You can see that. So this is how you can move a uh, layer. You just, uh, first, uh, there are two methods to do it. One, click on the layer, then move, or just click on the image, then move. So this is how you can move. So I have one background layer, two layers on that. So. Okay, now if you want to open, if you want to increase the size of this image or this image, so how can you do it? It is uh, very simple. So you just select that layer, like I have, uh, have clicked on this, and then go to edit, then free transform. So now you see these boxes, this bounding box, so, and just drag it or yeah, like this, you can zoom uh, or you can increase the size of your layer and then hit this confirmation button. Done. In this way, you can increase. And there is a shortcut that's Control T. Control T also gives the same stuff, uh, same thing. Uh, increase and decrease the size. So I can do it for this layer also. Yeah. This is the transform you can perform on your images. So, and uh, you can rename your layer. Just click on that, double click on the layer and rename, okay. So this is very easy for you guys. So let's move towards our selection tools now. Selection tool is, uh, uh, you know, we have a, a couple of selection tools and those selection tools sometimes create a lot of confusion. So let me open an image here. I click on file open and then my folder, it is on desktop and selection. Okay. So this is how you can open your uh, file also. So this is, uh, done so now i want to select uh, this part only uh, this particular portion of this image so how can i do it so i have tools like the, uh, these are marquee tool marquee selection tool then we have a lasso tool then we have a object selection tool 
So uh, either I just select the market tool and then uh, click on that and then do this selection here. This is how I can select. You can see these uh, lines. These are called marching, marching ants. So these are like ants and uh, it seems like marching. So we call that marching ants. And uh, it is making a, a quite a bit good selection right now for me. So, uh, and I can just right click on it and uh, click on layer by copy and it creates a copy of this selection and you can move around then. So yes, so you can see that what I did, I hide a layer by clicking on this icon, I icon. And uh, you can also do that, uh, click on this I icon here under the layer and you can hide it. So in this, uh, most of the time, we want to see what is the result. So we just hide a particular layer and check for other layers. So this is how you can uh, do it. So I have clicked and cop created a copy of another of that uh, another version of this particular section. And uh, now I want to get rid of this. I want to delete it. So let's delete. So there is two method to delete. Just click uh, on this hit backspace. And second is select it and click on this delete icon. Then it will say delete the layer. Yes, I want to delete. So this is uh, good for uh, deletion. So somehow you feel like, okay, you have deleted wrong layer. You can go back, control Z, the shortcut, universal undo shortcut. You can use that and uh, it will come back. So, but once you save the file, it will not come back. Okay, and uh, we have multiple history buttons here. History, this is history of, you can, uh, it saves around uh, 100 history steps. Whatever you click or whatever you perform, it saved at least last 100 history steps. And uh, you can uh, go back to that particular step anytime. So this is, but again, if you save the file, you close the file, these will be gone. So there's no comeback then. Okay, great. So let me uh, quickly switch to the another tool. So let's again file open. Yeah. Now I'm. Uh, uh, let's talk about quick selection. Though so this is the tool that you would be using a lot. So this is a quick selection tool, and it looks like this: a circle with plus in in that and then uh, zoom it you can increase the size or decrease the size from here from this icon or you can press your curly brackets uh, on your keyboard uh, the open bracket will decrease sorry uh, uh, yeah the left bracket will decrease the size and the uh, right bracket, which is a closed bracket, will decrease, increase the size on your keyboard shortcut. So this is how you can increase or decrease the size of your brush here. So this is how I'm making it. So you can see my brush size is too big and it just made some bad uh, selection for, uh, for my image. So uh, to now, how, uh, how, how can I, uh you know minus this or reduce this uh so you can just click on this minus button here and then just hover on that section so this is also i don't want i just want uh, this white part of this uh dummy so you can just uh you just need to do it on the edges of your extra part and rest it will take care of that because it picks the edges of uh, you know brightest color color pixel dark pixel of uh, on your screen so it just so now uh, you can see the how easily we have a very good selection here okay so and from uh, and uh, this is the only tool that you can uh, use uh, to create a very uh, quick selection. So to avoid the extra part, so we use very small brush like this. So let me 
just let me just uh, remove this selection. How can you clear this selection? Just select and then click on. Uh, yeah, deselect this one or control D. I generally use con uh, shortcut. So oops, sorry for that. So control D on your keyboard. OK, let's create and uh, let's create a selection once again. So you can see and my brush size is small. OK, it's not very small, it's like uh, average. And then I am just uh, moving on the dummy. So now I can see that uh, this, uh, this part is getting selected. So how can I uh, uh, immediately minus it? I can press Alt key, Alt will uh, switch the brush you can see i'm just holding the alt key on your key on my keyboard and then it's just switching the uh, the tool from plus to minus and i'm getting my brush uh, that time also i can see this part is not getting selected when i zoom up zoom in so i have to make it fine selection i will decrease the brush size again and then try to uh, you know uh, draw it on that, but again, the pixel sizes are not that good. So, yeah, it will go out of uh, out of the range, but I'm happy with this the selection. But you can always come back by you know uh, increasing decreasing your brush si brush uh, size and then check. Okay, now uh, the best thing is that. Uh, if if you have closed your selection here, so you just uh, hold your key. Uh, sorry, uh, this action, and then you can draw it like that. Again, I have to do it because the pixel size are like that. Okay, so this is how you can create your selection on your images. using your quick selection tool okay, i'm not using magic wand or uh, uh, object selection tool object selection tool is very good when you have to isolate a image uh, the focus is uh, really good so uh, i have a image uh, here so yes let's open it let me just deselect this okay so file open again here and my folder this like this so this is the image i clicked on pondicherry last year same day yes same date so uh, i want to isolate uh, this guy out of this picture so how can i do it either i can do a quick selection and uh, do that you can see that okay then i zoom yeah the best thing is whenever you are doing selection, you can uh, zoom and do it. And OK, guys, I didn't tell you. Sorry, my bad. Uh, so if you want to move your canvas, how can you move when you have zoomed? So you need to press space bar. On your keyboard. And then you can move around uh, and with mouse, you can move around on your canvas space will give you this hand tool you can see this hand tool and then you can move around on your uh, canvas hold your mouse and then you can move around and when you have zoomed a lot of zoom you know like 100 percent or maybe uh, not 100 percent but it is out of your screen boundaries so you can use hand tool using the space and then mouse uh, your mouse okay this is uh, so you can see i, I use the quick selection tool but it selected uh, this part also because the color is matching and this is also got select so i can just simply reduce the brush and and uh, remove it okay or increase so this is the uh, uh, one method that you can try but again if this is not working properly so we have a uh, 
object selection tool. So ob what object selection tool does, uh, it will, yeah, this is the icon. You just need to draw a, a square rectangle around your uh, subject on your image and wait. It's a AI based tool which calculate the pixel and all uh, you know pixel shapes and their uh, light data and everything. So it just calculate the backend. I'm, I don't have the details on that, but you can see it has a pretty much job. You can see that uh, this is uh, this section is still not uh, perfect because it is blending with the background of this image or uh, and this also we can uh, we can uh, make it perfect just let's go back to our quick selection tool okay then uh, decrease the brush size and then let's, let's minus the brush and then remove it or add it using according to the image. You can see that it is making a perfect selection here. Sim similarly here, same way. Yeah, you can see that. And just scroll down, see everything is fine. Yeah, I am happy with this result. Okay, so I'm go what I'm gonna do, right click on, oops. Yeah, right click on this layer by copy and hide it. I'm good. So you can see that uh, this is a perfect selection for me and perfect object uh, taken from the canvas. Okay. So, uh, and this is, uh, this is about the object selection. So there is one more thing uh, you can try with the selection is uh, which is called which I call select subject selection tool. Uh, for that, just click on this select menu and then uh, select menu and then click on subject. What it will does it will uh, select your uh, subject which is in the focus. Okay, so if you have multiple objects in your focus, so it will select all those subjects. So Generally, uh, I use it only when when I have images like these. Uh, okay, let me show. So like this, so like you have a plain background and you want to, you know, just get out of get uh, only the one subject. So I click on sub select subject. It is also AI based uh, tool. So you can see it has done very good work selecting uh, the hair and other other uh, section of the image and then just right click layer by copy and i can so this is what you can do with selection tool. So I just change the background background of this uh, image. So So you can see, you can uh, select the image, you can get rid of the background of your uh, object from uh, this. So this is, uh, I guess, uh, most of the thing, most of the time that I, even even we also get the, these query that how can we change the background? So uh, changing background and uh, selecting uh, selection tools are, uh, they go hand by hand. And uh, uh, so if you know about selection tools, which selection tool uh, will work with, uh, particular which object so you can use that and accordingly you can uh, check with uh, you can change the background of your image and so for changing the image background so you have to create a 
a layer so accordingly you have to place the object uh, on that layer so let's do that uh, i just open another file so i want to place this man here on this so let's see how can we do it there are two ways either i can uh, move this or i just go edit copy edit paste so this is how you can move your layers here so just so you can copy paste layer within files in, within uh, in photoshop and uh, this is the one thing that uh, i love a lot because i generally use it uh, for manipulating my images and creating the documents accordingly Um, hi, Sandeep. I think we've lost your audio due to some reason. Can you hear? Can you hear me? Yes, we can now. Okay, sorry. So, okay, I was uh, talking about the text tool now. Uh, yes. So for text tool, uh, we create we use a text tool a lot while creating uh, documents in Photoshop. So how can you get this text tool? So this is the uh, T icon. You can see this is the text tool. So under we have four option horizontal vertical. So we mostly we use uh, horizontal. So this icon will come up. This I icon will come up and just click on that. Then you will see this. Uh, this is our uh, placeholder default text you can remove it i'll type in that then hit this uh, confirm button then you will have your uh, text on there on the screen and now how can you in increase the size font of your text uh, just again select select the text you can see this uh, you must have used word so it is very similar to that microsoft word or any uh, word processing document so you can see preview of your text and uh, all the fonts so i'll go with uh, this one and this is the increase you can increase the size by default uh, the maximum size we have 72 points here and yeah uh, if you want to increase the size more than that uh, you can click on the you can see this icon uh, when you click over this t icon you can see this uh, finger icon just 
go uh, just drag it towards the right side of your screen and you can see the size is getting increased so this is or you can put the point and uh, you can type it like 150 i want it so i just put it 150 there now this is out of uh, your canvas you can see that how can you move it again select the move tool and then you can just drag it on your screen like this so and for and you can uh, in the layer panel you can see you have a text layer with the same layer so this is the t icon t icon means text layer okay now i can see it is not getting fit i can again double click on that text or select the text by double clicking uh, and then i can reduce the size like this and then commit okay this is there and if you want to change the color to any other color select the text click on this uh, color icon and then choose the color then commit so in this way you can change uh, uh, the color of your text and i can uh, this is our color bar and you can pick any color and this is the darkest light light color of that particular shade you can go ahead and pick that color uh, uh, you know shade of that color so i just pick this so this is the one thing and this is uh, alignment right center left generally it depends uh, how you want to place your doc uh, place your text on the document so the uh, okay this is the icon from here also you can work with your text and uh, change the text color so let's do this again and this is uh, i don't have any uh, you know other font for this it's only coming for bold and for some fonts like uh, arial under arial you can see uh, there are other options also regular and then narrow bold narrow italic narrow so the, you can change it and i guess you guys know about it so here also we have this text font and uh, this is uh, uh, if some some font uh, they do not have bold so i want to extra bold so i can just click on this i can make italic within photoshop and uh, so this is what i can do so one thing that photoshop has superscript and subscript like uh, uh, I, I want to type a date 14th uh, september like this but uh, this for th should go up correct so i so what i do i will select these uh, th by holding and moving the mouse and then we'll go this text option character option here and choose this icon uh, uh, click on this t uh, one icon you can see that at the top so it, it what it does it will create the superscript uh, of your uh, text. So we have it in Word and you can do it in Photoshop also. So this is, I guess, very useful for you guys. Sim similarly, we have a, a subscript. So if, you, if you're writing a formula or if you're writing any uh, science formula, you can do a subscript also with the, with the similarity. And you can under, underline that uh, text. Like if I want to highlight something, I can underline this September. So with that can be done within uh, Photoshop. And uh, I have a strike out. If you want to strike out something, you can do that and within Photoshop. So again, th this is all caps kind of, you know, small caps and uh, all caps with small caps. So you can do it within for Photoshop. You don't need to type specially. We can do that within Photoshop itself. So this is text. So let's try, let me just place it. Uh, yes let's uh, work let's do something on this uh, uh, image and uh, so we have done text tool how can you uh, create text tool and uh, obviously you can uh, uh, duplicate it uh, just pressing ctrl j any layer you can duplicate 
just uh, right click on it and then you will see duplicate layer option plus control J on your keyboard also duplicate your uh, you can duplicate the layer with the same so this is uh, how you can duplicate the layer and if you want to change the color of a particular character you can also change it just select you know you need first of all you need to uh, double click on the layer and then just select that character and then uh, choose the color you want to choose it like this so i have i can do it for for, uh, for a particular character or particular set of character also just selecting that text and then i can go and choose it like this okay so in this way you can create a, a good uh, combination of your uh, colors and uh, subject or uh, the best thing the best thing i use is uh, this thing uh, creating a different layer for different set of your color so that in in any time you want to uh, change something you don't have to go for a one line and two lines so uh, let's see uh, let me type this thing all the best okay this is character so i have uh, type this now i want to change the color of the i can do it this way and best so i can i have three colors now so but this is on one layer so uh, generally what i do i do this all then another layer the and then one more one more layer best okay and then you i can manipulate uh, this stuff like this i want all here i want the here I want to increase the size of the like this and and I want to increase the size of best like this. OK, we will do alignment later, but this is but now I can change the color of individual layer accordingly and I'll pick CSK color. Yeah, this one. Uh, you don't need so when you have individual layer, you don't have to just uh, click on, uh, you know, uh, uh, double click on uh, to select it. Just you can click here and you can come you this is the property panel you can just select that layer and go this property panel just click on this and then just over it so this is the uh, best thing that you have uh, that when you have layers when you have text on different layers you can choose uh, any color just by just selecting that particular layer and changing the color of uh, that layer so you can do that like this so i have i just clicked on the layer selecting the layer and then from the pro property panel of this layer and i can just choose the color and it is just getting selected so and now i uh, sometimes uh, we don't know how to uh, send uh, you know uh, align them in, in center so for the text it is very simple for any image any uh, layer it is very simple just uh, do one thing select or click on uh, go to the menu and click on select all it is uh, the whole canvas selected you can see mark marching hands moving around or marching around the canvas and then uh, go to, something is not good yes then select layer which layer you want to align. So I want to align all three layers. I can select multiple layers by holding down the shift key. And you can see, you can select uh, multiple layers and then click on this icon. This is alignment icon. Is This will only come when you have selected, uh, uh, you know, 
uh, whole canvas like con control a and then control. let me just move around okay like my text is like this so these icons are not there and you have to select move tool okay this tool press v only then you will see these icons so right now these icon not working only grayed out but but if i go control a now these are the they have come centered select the other one by one if you want to do it center and you can do it uh for this the i want center in vertical also so you can the, see the center vertical okay aligned it accordingly so that you don't have uh, any issue on that so after doing this just uh, command d select all because unless you do it it will move other items on your canvas so please take care of that uh, just command d if you uh, if you are done with your alignment or sorry, control D, if you're done with your alignment. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm talking of oh, command is on Mac, sorry. Uh, okay, so this is uh, the uh, best practices for working with a text tool. And uh, uh, so uh, before we uh, move ahead, I can, uh, we can do a small, uh, uh, I can create a, small example of text tool here how how i use a lot uh, on my graphics so there you have this uh, icon uh, which is called rectangle uh, rectangle tool we call it shape tool so these are shapes these are shapes like any any artwork any artwork so these are shapes so if i place it if i draw this thing here like if i choose rectangle rectangle tool so i'll have a rectangle tool here uh, rectangle. I can draw a rectangle on my screen. So why I do it? Uh, I'll tell you. So I want to write on this something about uh, what we are, what we have done. So I think I have created a wrong one. So you can create any shape. It's a freehand shape. You can see uh, the, the it will show you placeholder. This is called placeholder and you can just place it on the screen and then you can uh, uh, draw it. And if you want uh, square, what you have to do, you have to press shift and then draw. So now you have uh, your restriction, all uh, width and height will be equal. So you have to keep, uh, you have to hold shift key and then draw. Then you will have it a square, perfect square. Okay, similarly, if you want for a shape, so you can see I'm getting this under like shape. I don't want it. I want a perfect, perfect round sphere. So you can see I have circle, perfect circle now. You can see by holding the shift key. If I don't do it, it is very difficult for me to create a perfect circle here. I can just see that, okay. But if I hold shift now, this is perfect. I don't, think this will, yeah, this is perfect. Okay. So shapes are really good to create a overlay to for text, highlighting your text. So uh, for that, uh, I have created this rectangle. I want to type a right on it. So I, what I will do, I will not type on this because if I do this, you will see this uh, I with circle. It will type inside uh, the the rectangle. So I will just I uh, I will type the on the image uh, because if I do this, so you will see. Oops, sorry. So now you can see I am restricted within this uh, uh, rectangle. I don't want it. Uh, so you can see that, yeah, this is within this rectangle. So if I do this, so it, it the text is also going down, but I want to type, I cannot move it, uh, this text. Sometimes it does get stuck to this. So let's, and uh, we don't want this much of text. So I always prefer to type, uh, click first click 
outside the rectangle and then type this and then move on the triangle rectangle so this is how you can move it and uh, one more thing uh, sometimes uh, we place the text just below the layer so and we think oh where is our text how it is happening so like this if i have write it down but my layer is you can see my rectangle is above the text layer so if i move it so you can see some people will see that why my layer is hiding where is my layer okay just to make sure that your layer is not hiding not going uh, behind the uh, rectangle or any shape uh, you just need to make sure that this layer should be up how can you move it uh, just hold and then you see this blue icon it shows that you are going to place it above the uh, that particular layer then uh, uh, release your mouse and then you can move your layers and i have this here so this is not looking uh, good right now so uh, we can create opacity opacity is the is the transparency so right now how uh, the transparency is opacity is, is uh, i would say opposite to the transparency and uh, uh, right now the transparency of rectangular rectangle is zero so i will int uh, i will introduce some transparency in it so you can see i have some transparency i can see the layer behind that rectangle and uh, and i just move it here like this and this so you can see uh, you can create uh, you know uh, text accordingly this uh, yes you can create text and increase the size and then you can put it there like this so this is uh, what i do uh, more most of the time and uh, we create text and we we create text for we create flyers we create tracks for uh, for our, our organization for any other uh, you know uh, event uh, within society or other things so we create it and uh, this is how you can uh, create your text and place the rectangle accordingly. Yes. Uh, so opacity, just to make sure that uh, sometimes we forget that we have applied op opacity on the rectangle or any other object. And uh, just to make sure that you have uh, opacity, uh, you know, you see some this these kind of effect on your uh, image or on your uh, uh, objects or on your file so just to make sure that you click on that layer and just see this is opacity and there is a bar also you can see that uh, this should be 100 and fill fill is also the uh, fill is like how much you want to uh, like weightage of that particular thing so it should always be 100 so we don't uh, i would not prefer you to you know click on fill just play with the opacity and then choose uh, your work accordingly so this is uh, done, I guess. Yes. So I guess uh, uh, sort of we are uh, done for uh, day one, I guess. Great, great. Thanks, thanks a lot, Sandeep. This was really, really good. Uh, uh, we all had a lot of questions also that uh, I've been attempting to answer, but a few of them uh, that are still there, I'll actually put them across to you if uh, that's okay <clears throat> okay one of the questions uh, that has come is uh, as to how can we change the brush size as and when we are using the paint brush so if you can showcase that once yep so brush size uh, for that that's the same way to do it like we change the uh, our quick brush so curly brackets okay uh, or select the brush b is a shortcut for the brush and then this is the brush size you can change it and i have a color selected 
so this is the brush so there are different type of brush comes uh, in the market uh, so you can get any brush here so i have this brush so you can create so i'm just using my curly bracket on my keyboard shortcut as a keyboard shortcut to brush the image you can see that open bracket is for uh, decreasing size and close bracket is to increasing size so let me just type it control n for new document so so this bracket will uh, decrease the size of your brush and this bracket will increase the size of your brush on your keyboard or uh, you have a uh, that there are two brackets so don't get confused so this is the other bracket i am talking about so i i prefer curly bracket so these are the key that you can press on your keyboard so like this similar way i'm doing the same in, in, decreasing the size and here i am increasing the size decreasing the size here and this bracket will increase the size right. okay uh yes so sandeep uh, another question that we have is so uh, how to change the size of an image yeah size of an image uh, if you talk about uh, um, like there are uh, uh, within the layer we have uh, shown that we can uh, increase the size of the image over here but if you if we are talking about the canvas size so we can do it go to image and this image size so you have already created a canvas now you want to change it so from here you can change that uh, image image size and from there you can change the width or there are some presets so i want to right now it is a six by four so i want to change it to a4 and it shows uh, the image here and do not uh, so this if you want to do a, some custom shape like uh, five by seven so you can see that it generally oh sorry I'm inches seven. So generally, uh, it's changing the size uh, automatically over here. So you are not doing anything; it's just changing the height. Or if I press, uh, if I put seven, so it's just changing the width accordingly. So if you want to get rid of that, just un unclick this uh, chain icon, this link icon, and then you can five by seven width, five width, seven height, and then three hundred your. So now you will see this will change uh, your image size. It takes time. So five is width and seven is your. But I would suggest do it before you uh, make your uh, document. You know, starting your document. Why? Because if you do it in between, so you will see these artifacts. You know. Uh, because uh, it changes the expect ratio of your uh, image, you know, pro the proportion of your image and according to the pixel size of the image. So that is not recommended. So uh, if, if you want to maintain it, then do not unclick this icon because uh, if you uh, unclick it, uh, uncheck it, then uh, if I do now, so you can see everything is uh, intact here. Even if I change, uh, the width and height, suppose five, because it's changing automatically. It, it's not doing, it's just increasing and decreasing the size on the canvas, maintaining its uh, art uh, in that. Okay, so this is how you can do it. So some, uh, yes. Yeah, so if, okay, so, so yes, yes. Yeah, sorry. Uh, so we have another question, uh, basically the, uh, they want to know about uh, the guidelines, really, the pink and the green lines that come into the image. How can we create the guidelines? The guides, uh, okay. So those guides, you can create it uh, if you have a ruler on, okay. So you just drag it on that. So these are the custom guides, okay. 
and those pink and uh, pink these pink line these are auto guides so they will tell you uh, automatically that you are placing a image like this i am getting this so i am getting the center okay now i my image is center this is auto guide and again for this according to the uh, with respect to the other object so it shows those guides to align your object so it show it is showing me the three guides okay what is my height and this is the center of my image and if i go move a little bit to a right and you can see now i am getting vertical and horizontal center now it's it shows my object is uh, center of the image so this is how you can so uh, similarly for for these two images like you have multiple images and i want to align them according so you can see this this line uh, this uh, pink line uh, tells me that these images are on the same level okay if i do this so this vertical line shows me this is now uh, with aligned with the center so you can uh, see that okay now if i want to increase the size i can increase it and then now i can you can see that now these are aligned uh, with the size uh, with the height and width of both images are aligned and they are uh, aligned to a center okay you can see the center line of those images and the vertical lines so i think this is uh, this helps sort of yes yes okay. uh, so um, i think we'll take a uh... There are a lot of questions, so we also have tomorrow for this training. We'll take those uh, questions later, but uh, there are some questions that I'll also want to address and answer right now. I'm just sharing my screen for the same as well, if that's okay. <clears throat> so uh, the question that was there was, uh, and this was asked a lot, so I'm just addressing that. Uh, it was that uh, if Adobe Photoshop is uh, free or if it's uh, uh, paid or how it is. So basically the Adobe Photoshop trial version can be downloaded free of cost. You can just Google it and you should be able to get a download links. But in case you want to really go ahead and buy a Photoshop, uh, uh, don't go to the market. Uh, NASCOM Foundation, uh, specifically for the NGOs who have FCRA, uh, is offering Photoshop and Premiere Elements at a highly discount rate discounted rate of around 2148 rupees uh, in case you want all the apps that adobe has uh, in the adobe creative cloud we also have all apps uh, downloadable at a 60 percent discount with a with a very very meager 398 rupees as an admin fees both of these things can be looked at and searched at uh, the Big Tech website of us, which is uh, bigtech.nascomfoundation.org. So I hope uh, I have been able to answer the question. Um, for tomorrow, I believe uh, uh, if we have any exercise, uh, uh, if you want to like put that out also, Sandeep, it will be great. And uh, otherwise, uh, the agenda for tomorrow is uh, it's going to be much more exciting again, uh, wherein we'll have poster creation happening. We'll be able to let you know how to create posts around social media and mailers as well, for that matter. So all of that is something that we are hoping to cover tomorrow. So please don't miss out tomorrow. But if there's any exercise that, uh, Sandeep, that you want to give uh, all the uh, viewers today, uh, over to you for that. Yeah, only uh, one exercise that I want to give them, you know, just try to uh, inst uh, just install Photoshop and uh, how can they install it? They can install. Let me just show my screen. Uh, yeah, sure. Just one. Okay. Yeah. Okay, they can go to adobe.com. And uh, creativity and design, Photoshop. Under creativity design, you will see Photoshop. And from here, it says buy now because I'm not signed in. So people can uh, download it also, start a free trial. You can just move down and um, 
you can see start a free trial so when you click on that it will ask you to uh, download it create an account or sign in if you already have adobe.com account you can create or just create an account and then you can sign in and uh, you can download it this will give you 7 days of free trial and uh, you would be able to use the uh, full version of photoshop 2020 and uh, Uh, so how and just try whatever we have done today so we have done very basic uh, so that because uh, tomorrow we going to do some advanced thing uh, creating flyers and talking about different modules or uh, sorry different version of flyers uh, how to post or, or not how to post on but how can you make sure that uh, you are posting in the right format for insta uh, facebook and other social media because each and every have their own aspect uh, their own ratio and most of the time we see that we post our thing and that doesn't uh, come well on the social media so just practice on the text tool because this is the tool uh, and a selection tool this is the tool that uh, you will be use feedback there is some feedback audio feedback sorry okay so just basic focus on text tool and the uh, shape tool because these are uh, these are the tool that uh, you guys going to uh, use a lot uh, and uh, image resizing so this is what i'm going to i don't have any uh, you know assignment ready right now because uh, i was just doing some other stuff so uh, but again just no i think uh, uh, that's a great assignment uh, and i think uh, one thing that will also happen if uh, we are uh, like and we're joining in tomorrow is that you can simultaneously do the whole thing yourself while uh, uh, sandeep explains every single step uh, so i think it will be very very good for us all of us to download photoshop trial version to start off with to start uh, seeing as to how we are able to pop up and use this but uh, use photoshop for various different purposes while sandeep teaches us so yeah. great i think great over there yes uh, actually uh, because uh, we have a text tool uh, more you practice uh, more you will get to know about uh, text and shape and uh, the selection tool because you will do mistakes and those mistakes will uh, make you uh, learn a lot because i have learned uh, doing mistakes so uh, so please do mistakes and try to learn uh, more okay Okay great thank you see you all tomorrow at 11:30 sharp we'll start this uh, training the second part of the training and uh, hopefully we'll cover how to create mailers and social media content okay. take care everyone all the best yeah take care guys thank you very much thank for you. joining thanks a lot sandeep yeah. take care yeah. bye bye